Jesus' name. It's just once it stops flashing, then we're good. Uh, no, it's going to flash the whole time that we are, are oh. live. Okay, so we are live. It just allow, it just lets you know that we're live. If you don't see it, okay. then good to know. Okay. Yep, we were waiting. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Appreciate everyone coming. Thank you for coming to How to Heal Your Body Naturally Without Drugs. Um, so this is the second installment in a series that we're going to be having throughout the year on, on natural healing and how to heal our bodies naturally. Um, and so today um, I have a panel with us and I'll have uh, Janine and uh, Dr. Lee introduce themselves before we get started. Am I on? Okay. So Janine Goodwin, um, not an expert of anything by any means, but I am a marriage and family therapist and I do not prescribe medication. My name is Harold Lee. I'm a, a medical doctor practicing here in Portland 19, since 1985. And today's topic means that I'm going to lose my job. <laughs> if there's, <laughs> But I think I'm glad that God allowed me to practice in a specialty where uh, I actually discourage people to drugs as much as possible, even though I subscribe some of the medication. But, uh, and so I hope that we can learn each other today. And this presentation is supposed to be very interactive, so you don't have to hold questions till the end. Um, we're going to be talking throughout this whole time. So if you have questions, or comments, just uh, just feel free to raise your hand. Uh, Matthew will bring the mic over, and um, and we could go from there. Oh, and myself. So, <laughs> my name is Sharon Darrell. I'm the uh, Health and Temperance Ministry Leader. I am not a medical doctor. I'm an engineer, civil engineer, actually. But I've uh, been uh, involved in natural healing um, for many years. Actually, the expert is my husband, <laughs> Franklin Evans. <laughs> who didn't want to be on the panel, but he, he truly does know um, pretty much everything about the human body that I have ever, I mean, not just because I'm his wife, he really, really is an expert. 
um, and everything I've learned, it's actually from him. <laughs> so let's get started. Uh, we'll start with the first panel question. Um, and Janine and uh, Dr. Lee, you can both take this question and then we'll move forward. So the first question is, how do you define a drug? There's a lot of answers going through my mind right now, but I think the simplest one would be either um, a synthetic or natural um, substance that is taken into the body. Doesn't have to be food, um, but that alters either the chemistry of the body or the structure of the body. Yeah, I think uh, uh, as you just mentioned, uh, food, there are many people who believe also food is actually, actually, you know, drug in a way because uh, the purpose is to restore the health and without food we cannot do that. And most of the elements that they are trying to make a drug out of that actually is coming from the food a lot. I mean, basically they're all chemical, either organic or inorganic chemicals that they're trying to make it. But actually, uh, as uh, you pointed out, I agree that it's basically difference between natural versus artificial. Right. And uh, so uh, what is a drug? I think drug is done that uh, is made by the pharmaceutical company. Of course, there are some private you know, people who are cranking up some cocaine or things like that. But mm. anyway. So according to the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, the the legal definition of a drug here is a substance recognized in the official pharmacopoeia or a formulary, a substance <laughs> intended for use in the diagnosis, cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of disease, a substance intended other than food, just like Dr. Lee just mentioned, to affect the structure or function of the body. So, drugs. Here's some shocking drug facts that your doctor may have never told you. So medical errors are actually the third leading cause of death in the United States. And it, there's approximately 7,000 deaths per year from medical errors, specifically drugs, 20,000 uh, from errors in hospitals. Um, and if I drop down, drug, drug death um, reaction deaths is a fourth leading cause of death. And these are from medications that are properly used and properly uh, prescribed. So it's nothing that anybody did wrong. It's just the inherent drug in itself causes these deaths. Um, and just a very specific one, this is one that a lot of people use on a regular basis, the Motrin and Aleve, um, which are just over-the-counter ulcer medications. And it's linked to over 16,000 deaths per year. So, I mean, a lot of people just kind of use them and buy them over the counter and don't think about it. So, Selected Messages Book 2, it says that more deaths have been caused by drug taking than from all other causes combined. That's a lot. That is a lot. <laughs> so if we specifically go into what the Bible says about drugs, Can anyone uh, can anyone take a take a um, a guess on what how the Bible defines drugs and what the Bible says about drugs? I don't know. I would think. I mean, looking at pharmacia. Do you want to get a mic? Oh, okay. hold on, for Matthew. Where's our mic? Yep, yeah, right here. I mean, I would think that pharmacia and voodoo witchcraft is in the same category. You know, because they both alter the mind. That's the purpose of a drug, really, is to change your mindset where you cannot think. And to, um, it impacts your um, spirituality. Yeah. Okay. And just to add to that, um, Tarlene, it, it's not always necessarily to change the mindset, but I think the drug inherently does do that anyway, whether or not you're taking it for recreation to, to kind of give you the high or whatever, or taking it for pain or something like that. It does have that effect on the mind. 
Like a placebo. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So drugs in the Bible, drugs, the Greek word for drug um, in the Bible is pharmakon, which is uh, a spell giving potion, which is very interesting, like what you said. Yeah. People take it and expect or feel that this, something is happening to them. And it's uh, in the Bible, the practice of using drugs is equivalent to the practice of sorcery and witchcraft. Um, it's called pharmakia, pharmacy, medication, magic. It's all um, kind of lumped into the same thing. Okay, here's, a, here's an interesting one. What's the first recorded use of drugs in human history? Anyone? I heard something way over there. Is that low? Oh, that's Holly. <laughs> We do have a roving mic, so just raise your <laughs> hand if you want to answer. And the roving mic should be on. Uh, hello? Oh, <laughs> there we go. I don't know, maybe Egypt? Egypt, you said? Ancient Mesopotamia? Mm. We have to go even further back in time. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, the Native Americans used all kinds of herbs and stuff to get themselves high and uh, used it for different things. But I'm sure back in, way back, they did the same thing. Uh, I'm sure the Maya Indians used to use all kinds of stuff. So it probably happened a long time ago with the herbs. Okay, so we'll have to go even further back than the Mayan civilization. Let's get one more. I don't know if uh, that it was the, yeah, f the um, fruit that Adam and Eve ate, mm. it changed, it altered not just their mind, but also their bodies. It did. <laughs> and a lot of people don't realize that that was the first drug that was taken. So um, did you want to? You, you want me to read it? Yeah. It says, now the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Shall ye not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. She, Eve, reasoned that this must be true, for she felt no evidence of God's displeasure, but on the contrary, realized a delicious, exhilarating influence, thrilling every faculty with new life, such, she imagined, as inspired the heavenly messengers. It was grateful to the taste, and as she ate, she seemed to feel a vivifying power and imagined herself entering upon a higher state of existence. Wow. Any comments on that one? The source? Um, so it's, um, oh, I didn't even put it on here. You did. It, uh, oh. The scripture was Genesis 3, 1 to 3, oh, and then the quote came from the book Conflict and Courage and Daughters, and Daughters, of, Daughters of God. Yeah. So it's on there if you want to snap a picture of it. Any comment on that, Dr. Lee? I think. Uh, to what uh, the lady that Eve was experiencing is a sort of uh, like a transcending yeah. the reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, like if you, I had one time I had a uh, major surgery and I was so painful as a patient. And I asked them, uh, the nurse to give me some medication and they gave me Dilaudid, which is a narcotic. And uh, when I took one pill, I was very aware, but I actually had a sort of um, my body leaving my soul, wow. that kind of experience. So I, from that moment on, wow, this is uh, why people are asking the drugs. 
And so I, I actually stopped asking more of the medications. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like, uh, you know, we are in Portland, it's so, Portland is so uh, unfortunate. We have a lot of what they call, I mean, it's not my word, a lot of uh, zombie walking around. Mm -hmm. And if you see their YouTube, how they behave, yeah. mm -hmm. it, it's so, uh, it's so mind boggling. And I think, uh, uh, I mean, that much uh, potent uh, drug can do for us. So we have to depend on that. And if you kind of connect with it once, it's very difficult to get out of that unless you have such a strong willpower. Yeah. Has anyone ever thought of the fact that the first drug that was used was by Eve? I mean, even when Janine read it, you could see all the words that describe what she felt. <laughs> now, what she actually <laughs> felt was death, because that was sin being introduced into her. But she thought that she was on a high, and oh, this is how the angels feel, and this is great. <laughs> so it was a deception. It was spell giving. So here's our next question for the panel. Are drugs and their effects different today than in times past? I think this day uh, we have, uh, uh, when I went to medical school in, you know, probably 40 years ago or so. Uh, we haven't really taught a lot of uh, uh, what has been developed uh, as uh, what they call, you know, biotechnology uh, of medicine, where, uh, like for instance, the aspirin, uh, it's very easy to make because it's a kind of molecular or chemical formula. And, uh, but these days you are actually uh, uh, in, in making a, uh, a new kinds of uh, generation of the medication they call, you know, uh, large molecular uh, drugs, where a uh, good example is uh, like COVID vaccine, mm -hmm. where actually uh, they actually make a live uh, living cell some genes and to manipulate that and then put that into our body and try to make it, our body to make it. So this is totally new field, but I think the technology has been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think uh, 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 drugs during the lifetime of uh, Ellen White is very naive, mm -hmm. even though there are a lot of you know, poisonous things there. Uh, of course, these days we also have a lot of poison and uh, uh, in, the, in the medications. And if you look at the drug, I always educate my patient if they are taking some medication. I usually, uh, you know, as a specialist, I don't see patient, you know, fresh, new. They already had went through other doctors. So I ask them to bring all the medicine and I check them. And some of them, you know, amazing how many drugs they have. You don't know what kind of chemical interaction in your body. Exactly the same amount of medication that you are taking, probably you're the only one in the whole universe, whole this planet Earth, you're the only one. So uh, you are so unique chemical factory here. So you have to know what are the side effects of the medications. And uh, don't depend on doctors because you are the one who knows your body best. And doctor has to depend on the, the, what the patient is telling. And if the patient is not telling, uh, they cannot help. Mm -hmm. And so I asked them to talk with their pharmacist to, to write all the side effects or get some material. I mean, these days you have everything here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you have to know your own self. So actually the physician has to be an educator. And, but these days, as you know, if you see a doctor, you only see, what, 10 minutes, three minutes? And so there's not much time for education. And so this type of thing would be a very excellent opportunity. But I think uh, uh, this day, uh, any drugs that they're making or still has same kinds of you know, bad effects. So I, I always tell my patients, uh, there are two trees in the garden and the tree of knowledge and good and evil are still present in our times, and as you pointed out, mm -hmm. uh, this is the this is the pharmacia in King James Version, you know, uh, Revelation 18 says witchcraft, mm -hmm. 
And what is this for? It intoxicating <laughs> whole world. Yeah. And so uh, I think uh, uh, we, we have to know that uh, what we are taking. And uh, uh, of course, uh, as we uh, discuss more about, you know, is there any relevance of the medication? But uh, we have to know uh, from the beginning to there are two different ranks. One is the wisdom of God, one is the wisdom of the world. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the physician who trained, uh, especially like, uh, you know, the MD or DO, they don't have much of exposed to other alternative <laughs> way. So they practice what they learn. So please understand that. Uh, so, but I think, uh, uh, just like anything else, we have to bring everything in my responsibility. You know, this is a church setting. Why we're Protestant? Why we're not, not uh, you know, Catholic? Because we are, we are a, a priest of all. In other words, there's nobody between me and God. I cannot depend on my spiritual matter for somebody else, for their eternal life. Same goes with this life. I have to take the responsibility back to me. So, so. You know, uh, we know that uh, all these good books telling that we have to study our own way to anatomy and physiology, so at least we know what we are talking about, uh, which is uh, the, the only way we can truly guard my body as a temple of God, and so we can actually stick with that, that principle. Yeah. Do you have anything to add, Jenny? Um, I think this was said at the very beginning. Um, the question is, are drugs and their effects different today than in times past? I'm going to say yes and no. Um, no, because, you know, Dr. Lee, when he described his experience taking a pain pill, pain med, it's kind of, you know, that's what happens when you take narcotic, you know, those hard drugs, those ones that are made to completely give you a whole new experience. Um, but then you have drugs, and this is what was said at the beginning, you know, in, in plants, you know, you have food as medicine. And of course, we wouldn't call them drugs, we call them medicine, right? So there is medicine, and I think, actually, I know that because we are fallen and we are prone to death, we will get sick and we will need medicine. Mm -hmm. um, but the effects of that medicine now I think is a little bit different than it was in the past. Now you could take medicine, quote unquote, and it could change your whole personality. It could change who you are. Um, and, and that's, to me, a little bit different than it was in the past. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Seeing that- Microphone. We can say. <laughs> Okay, seeing that the Antediluvian world was a lot wiser, smarter, not wiser, was smarter than us, and our brains have depreciated so much compared to the Antediluvian world. So and the Lord said there's nothing new under the sun. I would think that before we were on this planet in the Antediluvian world, that they knew more, sure. you know, and the drugs that they used, um, were a lot more sophisticated, I guess you can say, or the doctors or whatever like that. But nevertheless, the altering of the mindset is equal, mm. you know, whether it's in the past or whether it's present. Mm -hmm. And that's the purpose of drugs, mm -hmm. that's away from price. That just gave me a thought. They, the antediluvians were also closer, I guess, in time to the tree of life than we are, Yeah. right? So yeah, they may have had more sophisticated drugs and things that, that were actually helpful as well. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So let's look at two kings from the ancient Israel. I call it two sick kings. So the first king was healed. Um, and let's see, can you read this one? Me? Yeah, and I'll read the Amaziah one. <laughs> so Hezekiah, King healed. Can you see okay, it? Okay, yeah, I can okay. see it. Yeah. Um, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, 
And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he, Hezekiah, turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, hallelujah, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. Amen. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. Amen. So Hezekiah did a lot of things right. He had the prophet come see him, and then when he was told he was going to die, he prayed directly to God, and then the healing that God brought to him was natural. Amen. It was just some figs on his boil. The second king, Azahiah, it was a king not healed. Let's see why. So it says, Isaiah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, arise, go up and meet the messenger of the king of Samaria and say unto them, is it not because there is a God in Israel that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but thou shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. That's two very different outcomes. Wow. And, you know, and this was an Israelite king, so he knew better. <laughs> And he didn't, he didn't even try to pray to God. He was like, yeah, go inquire of this idol, which can't do anything for him, <laughs> and you know, ask if he could recover. So let's move on, because we don't have a lot of time. So this is a question for the panel. What is the best way to find healing, considering those two, those two accounts? In this uh, story of Hezekiah, I think uh, uh, what's the benefit of the fig tree? And uh, it has been well known that the fig tree has, a, I have here a list of things here. Uh, it, it used as a laxative, cardiovascular, respiratory, antispasmatic, and he says anti-inflammatory remedies. And it improved the blood uh, pressure and blood uh, uh, fat level. And uh, so it's good for the diabetes, you know, high, high blood pressure, and the skin problem, respiratory issue, and digestive disorder. So I think uh, the, probably uh, God wants him to use some natu natural remedies. Uh, but I think here the whole issue between the two kings are uh, the second, it is uh, uh, Isaiah, he actually, you know, looking for a, a, a god the god of, uh, you know, the name is Baal, and, uh, and they are, you know, sacrificing uh, kids, uh, children and things like that. But Bible actually, uh, why, why this king was uh, doomed uh, to die? Because they've known uh, who they are serving for. And uh, if you all know the uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and God says, uh, if you follow my commandments and follow my will, which is a will of life, which is a way of the life, is, God says there will be no disease, no disease that are upon on the Egypt. Mm -hmm. And then the last verse there is, I'm the one who heals. Mm -hmm. uh, God is the one who heals us. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a, you know, spiritual, but also physical healing. So uh, I think uh, uh, the best way uh, to find healing is first to go to the right source 
And of course, uh, God can use uh, the, what he created in this planet Earth. And so he can use all other remedies, uh, uh, things like that. But I think if you go to uh, non-God and, and different uh, ideas and uh, bow down there and ask him for help, I think that, that is uh, choosing the, the death rather than life. No, he took it. That, that's exactly where I was going with that. Okay. So. Next time you, you speak first. <laughs> <laughs> so what about drugs in the last days, which is today? What does the Bible say? And actually, Dr. Lee had already quoted this. Mm -hmm. um, but if we read the whole thing, it says that a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea. Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon, which means confusion, be thrown down, and it shall be no more at all. And the voice of the harpers and the musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. No craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And sorceries here is, um, for the Greek word, it's pharmakon. So it's saying by their drugs were nations deceived. And it's interesting that, that connection with deception in the last day, that drugs will be connected with deception. And that took... And that took me to this one. Mm -hmm. So, and this is a controversial topic, I know, the whole COVID vaccine and stuff like that. But the main thing that I wanted to bring out with this, and this is uh, Rand Paul, he's a congressman, and he wrote this book about, called Deception, the Great COVID Cover-Up, because there was a lot, of, a lot of things happening during that time that um, was deceptive to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and I just put in here, I mean, there was a lot of people that took the vaccines for different reasons. A lot of people, I, I have lots of family members, they took it just to keep their job. They didn't believe in it, but they didn't want to lose their job. Fear of being considered a conspiracy theorist, people were uh, being prevented from being around their family member. I knew one lady, um, they wouldn't even let her hold her grandbaby <laughs> um, when the baby was born because she didn't um, have the, the, the shot. Um, so different things like that. So, and this isn't very different from when the mark of the beast is going to come in. People are going to take it for almost the exact same reasons if you look at this list. Mm -hmm. The threat of losing their job. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really big one. So, and I think we kind of <laughs> touched on that, but let's start with Janine. How have you seen drugs affect the mind and personality of the user, and especially in, in like as a yeah. psychologist, and you deal with different people. Right. Uh, let me just clarify: marriage and family therapists. <laughs> I do not deal with drugs at all, um, but I do see how, on both sides. Now I'm going to be fair. I do see how the use of drugs, and we're talking pres prescription drugs in this instance, mm -hmm. and, and even those that are deemed legal now, um, which would include, um, um, what do you call the mushrooms? It's a scientific the word. Thank you, psilocybin <laughs> yeah. mushrooms, yeah. Um, and marijuana. Some of those um, alter the personality in a way that makes the client more responsive to treatment. Mm -hmm. And then some alter it to where it exacerbates their symptoms and makes it worse. Um, I've had people come to me and say, well, I've started taking such and such and such. Um, my, my psychiatrist prescribed it to me for, say, panic disorder. And um, I'm not having any more panic attacks. And I've gotten that. And I'm like, whoa, you know, like, so, Let's, let's, you know, talk about that. What's up with that? Um, but on the other end, folks are like, well, I'm not having any more panic attacks, but I'm like super duper depressed and suicidal. And that's not me. I'm always happy and I'm always this and I'm always that. And right now I'm just numb and I don't feel like, I don't feel anything. 
and that bothers me, but it doesn't bother me enough to like stop taking it, right? Mm -hmm. So I've seen how it can work for good, I am gonna say that, and then I do see how it ultimately ends up altering people, the how they think and how they see the world, their personality and everything. And even if it worked for the good, it's only meant for short term. Yes. These things are not meant to be in your body for years. I literally had to um, help a client wean down with the help of her prescriber because she was on a benzo, which is a benzodiazepine, for 20 years. And the minute we started tapering her off, like little bit, I'm talking can like you clarify point, what the benzo... So a benzodiazepine is basically a controlled substance. Okay. It is a narcotic, okay? But it is used to treat mental disorders. Um, we were take, tapering her off very, very small, but even with those small dips, she was, her, the anxiety that she was being treated for was coming back full force. And she would feel that and she would be down for days and when we would have our session, she'd tell me that and I would be like, whoa, okay, so we're dealing with something here that for me, I just felt like completely powerless to help her with other than to just say, stay the course, don't stop, but don't go back. Like, stay the course, let's work with the coping skills, let's do what we need to do. Because what you're, what you're, this is what I said to her, and I believe this was the Lord that put this in my brain. He said to me, you need to tell her this is evidence that her brain still works, and that feeling this is not abnormal. She hasn't been unable to feel for 20 years. And so the minute you start tapering down, the brain is like, what? Function. Oh my gosh, life, okay. And then everything just comes flooding back. And she took that as a negative when it really was a positive. And today she's completely off. So praise God for that. Awesome. Do you have anything to add, Dr. Yeah, I think uh, I've seen many cases where patient had a chronic depression, and I ask uh, about you know, their history of depression and uh, where they are now, and some of them attribute to the antidepressant, and so certainly there is a benefit, because all the drug has a benefit, otherwise we're not calling them as a, as a tree of knowledge and good mm -hmm. and evil. Mm -hmm. And people, if it's a only, only evil, people wouldn't take it. Sure. And so there's some benefit for that, the only issue the way I see is, is the, the issue, is this the chronic use or it's the acute use? Mm. I think uh, if something is going to chronic, you have to change your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to, you, only two choices, either you know, drug or, or lifestyle change. And I've seen many people who are in an acute setting, they, they depend on some drug, but from there on, they just realign their life and move on without the medication, but depending on some other issues, some other resources. But you cannot just leave the, the situation you know, empty because uh, as Bible says, when the, when the devil came and uh, uh, you know, everything was cleaned up seven times and everything's empty, then he'll bring some more. Mm -hmm. So we have to fill with uh, the other good spirit, otherwise it's not going to be uh, winning the battle. Yeah. Oh, can I just say this one thing? Sure. Okay, so this part I did forget, but I thank you for saying lifestyle. So I almost got in trouble for this one with the prescriber, because as, as this client was weaning down, we were talking about things she could do in her lifestyle to, you know, offset, right? And the prescriber thought that I was stepping over my bounds. She was like, you can't do that. You know, she has to be able to um, maintain her medication regimen and you can't be telling her to, you know, do this or do that or the other thing. I said, I didn't tell her. I said, this is just what I know. And I was like, um, I think it's important that if she is removing something, there has to be something else put in its place. I said, otherwise, what is she going to do? I said, she's going to seek another drug to help with the coming off of of this. And I said, but I'm not trying to step on over my bounds or over my toes. I'm like, you talk to her about it and you talk to her primary care provider about it and see, see what, what's said. 
the primary care doctor actually backed me up and said, no, she should be replacing what is being taken with something that is more healthful for her so that she can get through the taper. So vindication in that moment, but it, it is something that we, even here on this panel, we just kind of need to be careful about because there is a, there's a business to this. And so when you are, it seems like you're stepping on toes by talking about lifestyle and the health message. That's why Dr. Lee prefaced this by saying he might lose his job. You know, things of that nature. It's like, no, it's really serious. Because you're messing with people's money mm -hmm. and medicine, drugs, this is a business first before it's a health ministry. Well, as we know that uh, uh, like, uh, about 20 years ago, the big hospital, they changing their names. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually, and it becomes nationwide as a, another industry, so medical industry. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about industry, what is the purpose and existence of industry? It's basically money making. So as you said, original idea of uh, healing the sick is changed quite a bit into if there's any money profit, they'll invest, otherwise they'll stop it. So it's very unfortunate that we are now calling uh, medicine as an industry yeah. in a way. Yeah. Wow. So I'm gonna probably skip a couple of these slides for the sake of time and just go with the Okay, let's go with this one. So this is from Medical Ministry. It's a combination of that and pamphlet 144 and Selected Messages, book two. But it says, nothing should be put into the human system that will leave a baleful influence behind. Experimenting in drugs is very expensive business. Paralysis of the brain and tongue is often the result and the victim dies an unnatural death. When, if they had been treated perseveringly with unwearied Unrelaxed diligence with hot and cold water, hot compresses, packs, and dripping sheets, they would be alive today. Mm. Christ's remedies cleanse the system, but Satan has tempted man to introduce into the system that which weakens the human machinery, clogging and destroying the fine, beautiful arrangements of God. The drugs administered to the sick do not restore, but destroy. <laughs> drugs never cure. Instead, they place in the system seeds which bear a very bitter harvest. Wow. Um, and the thing that kind of comes to my mind, especially the part where it talks about the unnatural death, um, and Frank and I had a friend, and her mother died. Um, this, was, this was probably about maybe 15 years ago. And I just remember her account of um, when her mom died. And she said when her mom died, her mom had, had so much drugs in her body that the mom couldn't pray. She couldn't, she couldn't even... They couldn't even reach her with, you know, like while she was dying. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even connect her with God. And, I, and she was so traumatized by that that this friend, she herself died a few years ago and she took absolutely no drugs because she was so adamant. She's like, I don't want to die like that. I don't want to, I want to die being able to, to pray and to be connected to God because she was so traumatized about how her mom actually died. You know, and I just remember that just kind of came into my mind. I don't know if... Anyone else has anything on this statement? No. So, did Jesus ever use drugs to heal? No. No. He never did. I mean, you can read all the different accounts in the Bible, and he's used clay, and he, you know, he put hands on people and all this stuff. But he never, he never prescribed a drug. He never, he never. That's not something that he ever left a path for us to follow. Um, do you want to read this one? Sure. Uh, this comes from Selected Messages, book two. It says, Christ never planted the seeds of death in the system. I'll say that again. Christ never planted the seeds of death in the system. Satan planted these seeds when he tempted Adam to eat of the tree of knowledge, which meant disobedience to God. Our Savior is the restorer of the moral image of God in man. He has supplied in the natural world remedies for the ills of man 
that his followers may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. We can with safety, we can with safety discard the concoctions which man has used in the past. This is God's method, the herbs that grow for the benefit of man and the little handful of herbs kept and steeped and used for sudden ailments have served tenfold, yes, 100 fold better purposes than all the drugs hidden under mysterious names and dealt out to the sick. Wow. Yowzer. Yeah. <laughs> Can anyone sh share an experience on where they used a natural remedy and it worked fantastically? I mean, from, and from my personal experience, because Frank and I, we don't use any, I mean, we, we don't even have aspirin in our house. And we have not had that in our house for probably since we've been together, so 20 years. <laughs> yeah, um, and so we use only natural stuff. And in my personal experience, it is more powerful. It works better, it works faster. <laughs> and just to not take it lightly, um, it's still a scientific method behind natural healing. So it's not like I'm just gonna grab you know, you know, an herb here and here and put this together. You still have to do it intelligently. So you still have to learn about it because herbs are also powerful and herbs can put you in a hospital <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing. Joy? Um, Brad was sick not too long ago and we'd come to, I don't know how we knew, but some friends told us to put onion slices on his feet and put a plastic bag and put his socks over him. And he went to bed two nights with it and by the third night he was better. And I just had a cold just recently, and I said, I'm gonna try that onion. So Brad sliced up some onion, put it on my feet, and I sat around on the couch, relaxed for three, four hours, and I said, I think I've had enough. And believe it or not, it, did, it helped take away the rest of that cold that I had, and I was all congested. Mm. Amazing, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Oh. We Hi, have a I wanna share a testimony. Um, it was the Saturday the 9th, and I was with Sister Mara, and I saw her walking funny. And I said, hmm, something's wrong with her. So I went and asked her what's going on, and she said, oh, I have a pain. And she just touched where it was hurting. And I said, stop, I stop by my house. I, I have something to give you. And she said, no, I'm going home. So uh, my brother and I, we have, um, lunch, and I say, I'm going to go there. So I call her and say, get ready. <laughs> and she said, are you not asking me? No. I said, I'm going, so get ready. <laughs> so I, I grab a um, comfrey oil that my sister made, mm -hmm. and I made an um, ointment of comfrey. Mm -hmm. So I went there, and I said, sister, get ready. So I held her to get into the bed, and I pray. I pray because the Lord is the Amen. one who heals, Amen. not us. Amen. Amen. We obey and he heals. Yes. Right. And then I give her a massage and it was so painful. Mm -hmm. I can tell she almost cried. She almost cried. And, wow. and I said, you had to handle this. So I probably was like 30 minutes giving massage and then I <laughs> put the ointment, rub it, and I put the oil in it. And I pray and I said, well. And then at eight o'clock, she called me, but it was a lot of noise. I couldn't hear well, but she said, I'm okay. I think I'm going to work, okay? Then on Tuesday, I called her and she said, I said I was healed. I don't have no more pain. <laughs> so, and I say, praise God. Amen. Because he was the one who healed you because you obey. Yes. Forced. She was forced to obey because I was <laughs> the one in there. So I praise God because he is a healer. Yes, yes. he is. Amen. 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 Okay, we have a Tarlene over here. And then I'll see. Well, I cut my finger pretty good one day, slicing something frozen, which you should never do, uh, especially with a dull knife. And, uh, <clears throat> and so, and it bled pretty good. So I went and just grabbed some cayenne pepper out of my cupboard, packed it in the, in the wound, the cut, for two days. Changed the Band-Aid and packed it more. In two days, it was healing, it sealed. And you don't even see any more, even a scar on my hand, wow. just from using the cayenne pepper. Wow. Incredible. So our next question for our panel, how do drugs actually work in the body? So we'll give that one to 
truly? Well, there are many different drugs that work on different parts, but you can never guarantee that when you take a pill that goes to a certain direction, certain location of your body, mm -hmm. it has to go through the you know, GI system and absorb uh, the blood, uh, through the blood, and it goes, it permeates all over your body. And so a lot of time, if you have any localized area problem, it's better to localize treatment. And so uh, that's where I think a uh, uh, drug can have some side effects. It never intended to harm, you know, certain area, but because of the route that you use, and, and that's why it, it just go to all different uh, system and organs, so uh, there's no, no way to prevent that. Uh, of course, uh, you can have, a, you know, in the brain, you have a, a blood-brain barrier, so that there are a lot of times some drug uh, cannot get in there. Uh, but I think uh, overall, uh, we really cannot control. And, uh, and so uh, drug is bound, the drugs are bound to have uh, some side effect by, because it affects all our organ as long as, as soon as we swallow it. Mm. Okay. So we'll get into just a few actual category of drugs, and then we're actually going to have some practical um, things that you can do to um, safely replace them. And just let me say um, before we go into it that if you are on a drug, don't just get off of it. Please don't. <laughs> you, have to, you have to work with your doctor because there are certain drugs that if you get off of it, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous because a lot of times drugs will supplant something that your body's doing naturally and you have to have that transition time. The doctor has to wean you off of certain things. So that's just kind of the disclaimer is work with your medical doctor if you're on something, but if you do want to get off of it, start talking to them and start working with them on, on tapering, uh, tapering it down. Yeah, I want to just share one uh, uh, tragic history that happened to a certain person that, that we know well. And that person was living here in America and, and went to her home country. Uh, she had some medication. I know exactly uh, what, but uh, she apparently has some anti-depressant, anti, uh, anti uh, uh, um, hypertensive medications. Mm. And, but she went to a, a local health uh, clinic or institute uh, like a wild wood or something like it in America. And apparently they asked to stop all the medications. And I think while she was going through her, you know, her uh, health uh, recovery there, she had a major stroke mm -hmm. and a bleeding. Mm -hmm. And I think still she's in the hospital. And, and so I think uh, if you have been taking a chronic, uh, if you take any medication on a chronic basis, don't just act yourself as a doctor and stop it. Because mm -hmm. when, when you take it a long time, your body has to adjust it. If it doesn't uh, take it more, at that time you can have a problem. Mm -hmm. Especially the medicine that are related with uh, like a, a vital organ like a heart and kidney and liver mm -hmm. and some you know brain area. So uh, I think uh, uh, we never intend to you know, core turkey to stop the medication. I think each and everyone has different uh, cases, so we have to have a, you know, individual need to, to met. And I wish that uh, uh, there's some people there who advise like that, rather than, oh, this is a general policy, you cannot come in without, uh, medic without you know, stopping medication. I think that's wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have to always remember that the, the Bible always counsels to do everything decently and in order. Yeah. And so you always have to use wisdom. So definitely um, always work with your doctor on that. So let's look at um, some common ones. We talked about heart drugs. So specifically, a lot of the heart drugs, um, and I won't read it word for word, a lot of what it, it does is it forces the heart to beat stronger, especially if the person has congestive heart failure. So it's putting something up, making your heart really start pumping hard. Um, but it also causes different things. It causes um, 
dehydration, it depletes the liver, it damages your liver, uh, increases your blood sugar, and it does all this sort of stuff. And a lot of it causes heart attacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I have a relative, and he just got out the hospital after eight days. He was going into um, arterial fibrillation con continuously, and they were having to shock him, and nobody knew what was going on. And so they let him out, and so I called him on the phone, see how he was doing. And he said, he said, Sharon, they have me on so much drugs. But he's like, there's one I'm not taking. So I'm like, well, which one? And he's like, this one, it says the only side effect is death. Oh <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know which, I didn't even ask him the name of it. So I was like, well, you probably don't want to take that one. <laughs> um, and I, I kind of encouraged him. I was like, you need to find someone and you need to not stay on this stuff. You need to um, figure out what's going on and then you need to start doing some, some natural stuff. So, and anyone has anything to add, you can always just kind of raise your hand. Mm -hmm. So pain medications, and this is like really commonly used stuff, Tylenol, um, ibuprofen, Aleve, Midol. Um, and so what these do in the body, they appear to relieve the pain and inflammation, but they also cause a lot of liver damage, um, chronic stomach irritation. I think Tylenol <laughs> specifically can cause bleeding, internal bleeding um, in the stomach. Um, it causes uh, diarrhea, cramps, kidney damage, um, shortness of breath, vision damage, apparently also wow. hearing damage. Mm. So there's a lot to, it costs a lot to use drugs. Mm. A lot of people think it's cheap, you have insurance, but the price is high. <laughs> and then here's some other common ones for a cough and cold, and Enjoy just told us um, the simple remedy that they use to address just the cough and cold uh, at home, just onions. You know, um, there's no side effect with an onion, <laughs> you know? And so here we have um, a lot of the cough and cold drugs and how they work. Um, and it's, you know, they work by um, making the body uh, put out a lot of lubrication and kind of expelling all of that stuff really, really fast. And a lot of times the body's actually using this to heal. And so you stop that healing process and it, you mask it and then the spirit of prophecy says that it actually, the, the disease changes form and location. <coughs> so just before we go into, and it, well, I think Harold already gave us um, yeah. <laughs> that one. Did you have one? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, there's a false system of healing that destroys life, and that's the drugs. Um, you know, it's, it's toxic chemicals. It dulls the mind. Um, and it's a, it's a system that treats the body very harshly. Mm. They call it sometimes heroic medicine. Mm. But should we treat the body harshly? No. You know, I mean, sometimes they just look at it and be like, oh, you don't need, you know, for years, they said they didn't need the appendix. The body didn't yeah. need the appendix. Now they know that it's part of the, mm -hmm. um, the immune system. Is it the immune system, um, Dr. Lee, or is it the, or is it the lymphatic system? I per, would you repeat the appendix? The appendix. the appendix is part of. Oh yes, appendix is a part of the you know filtering system okay. of the immune system. So, the but it's system. a very common, you know, that they remove the appendix out. And yeah. uh, uh, mm. but I think uh, actually when I was young, I had appendicitis and uh, so painful, and I didn't know the doc doctor Edmonds doctor just take it out. Mm. And ever since I'm still healthy, but praise God for that. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but I think uh, people, we, we are not really uh, uh, well known in a certain part of the body. Maybe it's not uh, useful, and so they just cut it off. And like, uh, you know, you have a, uh, in the tonsils. tonsil thing, same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, but those are actually the appendix and tonsil are so important in terms of uh, filtering system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to protect that, yes. Yeah. So, and that the false system of healing is also the principle of death. You have life, and then they add something that causes death in an attempt to extract life from the body. But God's healing is different. Um, uses life, and then life-giving substances to add more life. And so we have to start kind of adopting that principle in our mind that when you add things to the body, it should be things that bring life and not assume that you're gonna take something toxic and it's going to make you healthier. It might appear to, but it's also causing damage. Mm -hmm. So, 
And I think we already read that one. <laughs> so what can we use in place of drugs? Can you read this one? Do you want me to read it? Yeah. Okay. Heaven approved healing. There are many ways of practicing the healing art, but there's only one way that heaven approves. God's remedies are the simple agencies of nature that will not tax or debilitate the system through their powerful properties. Pure air and water, cleanliness, a proper diet, purity of life, and a firm trust in God are remedies for the want of which thousands are dying. Yet, these remedies are going out of date because their skillful use requires work that the people do not appreciate. Tell us about it. Fresh air, exercise, pure water, and clean, sweet premises are within the reach of all with but little expense. But drugs are expensive, both in the outlay of means and the effect produced upon the system. Wow. So let's look at healing the heart heaven's way, right? So there's acute heart conditions. You know, there's heart attacks and all that stuff. And then there's also stuff that you can do to keep your heart healthy yes. and maintenance. And there's lifestyle. So acute, obviously, um, if you have acute stuff, you want to obviously get medical attention. But you need to pray. Mm. The first thing you need to do is pray. And yeah. you can pray and ask God, God, keep my heart beating. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Um, there's also something called a deep cough. Um, people have actually used this while they were actually getting a heart attack. And that's like coughing from very deep down inside, a really hard cough, because it's kind of almost kind of forcing your heart to get back into the rhythm it should. Um, and the neutral bath, which is kind of more for uh, uh, if it's like stroke related. But another thing that's with heart attacks, and this one um, is actually from a naturopath called Dr. John Christopher. And it's, um, he would give his patients a teaspoon of cayenne pepper in hot water, in a cup of hot water. And it said that he had never lost a patient to a heart attack. Wow. So that's one that might want to keep in mind. And uh, the cayenne pepper, don't just get any old cheap cayenne pepper. It's got to be the 90,000 heat unit one. So it's a really, it's a very specific one. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind. Um, I think the cayenne tincture also works for that. Um, so that's for the acute stuff. Um, so in terms of um, herbs for your heart, hawthorn is one of the best and most gentle herbs for your heart. That's one that can be taken just on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. It's just a plant, it's like a berry that grows naturally. Um, and they just do an extract with that one. Uh, coenzyme Q10, that's another supplement. TMG, which is trimethyl, um, Remind me of what the TMG is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a super long name. And it's a, it's a supplement, but it's also really good for the heart. And so is lecithin. And there's some other herbs, like astragalus, um, which is a, a, a traditional Chinese medicine herb, um, and some other ones. And I don't know if anyone has anything. We have Jed with us. I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> <It's a> natural path. <laughs> if there's any more art herbs that um, you could kind of share with us, maybe. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to be dispensing any medical advice, but uh, there are plenty of things out there that will be beneficial that's already found in nature. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we need to recognize is that uh, God told us in Exodus 15:26. He said that if you obey him, I'll just read it here. Uh, Exodus 15, 26, if you will diligently listen to the voice of, the, of Jehovah your God and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians. For I am Jehovah, your healer. And modern archaeology has, uh, when they've excavated tombs and things like that, have found when they've uh, done analyses on these mummies and other remains, 
the Egyptians died of many of the same diseases that people die of today. Yeah. Um, and in fact, based on scientific literature, uh, they do a huge survey of uh, the state of the U.S. health. And they look at, for instance, one study looked at all the things that were related to disease, injury, and risk factors in America from 1990 to 2016. That's an extensive a study. study yeah. And basically, if you take the Cliff Notes version of it, the number one cause of death in the United States is our diet. Um, we, we think that, for instance, high blood pressure or heart attack or cancer, all of these things are what's really killing us, but we think that that's all genetically related, but science shows that it's only 10, maybe 20% at most that our genes account for those sorts of risks. In fact, most people move from low risk to high risk countries, uh, and they've stratified this across different kinds of countries, their disease rates almost always change to that of their new environment. So you have people that move from uh, other countries into America and adopt the American diet, their risk factors for these sorts of things dramatically goes up because they change their American diet. diet. Yep. Um, a lot of people say certain, life, certain diseases are related to genetics, but in fact, it's because you're eating yeah. like your parents and Absolutely. like your grandparents. Yeah. So we have to recognize that God has already outlined in scriptures the things that can help and contribute to good health. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing is, if you look at what uh, God prescribed in Genesis chapter 1, he said you should eat of all the plant material that he's made for you. So if you get off the standard American diet, sad, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, and go back to a more plant-based diet, you will see dramatic changes and uh, to, to, I guess, infringe on a trademark, the New START principle, N-E-W-S-T-A-R-T. Uh, nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, trust in God. That, those factors there in of itself are biblical principles that will allow you to have prevention, prevention, and it will uh, uh, fortify your body to have a stronger immune system. Because people get sick, not necessarily because you have germs and viruses, that's true, those things cause diseases, absolutely. But did you know that your gut, did you know that your skin, did you know that your mouth has these bacteria and viruses present all the time? And the reason why you're not getting sick is because of your immune system, and it's a weakened immune system that allows those uh, microbes to take uh, advantage of your body. In fact, your body produces tens of thousands of cancer cells every single day. And they've discovered that there's a particular secretion that happens during your sleep cycle that fights cancer. And most of us are probably sleep deprived, mm. you see. It's your immune system. Um, they just released on social media, they, there was a video of your immune system killing a cancer cell. It's a fascinating uh, video that they put out. And uh, the white blood cell, the lymphocyte, goes there and attacks that cancer cells and just like, just releases cytokines and all sorts of stuff. You can actually see it. It's a fascinating video. Go, go Google it. And it does it like three, four times, and then finally the cancer cell just shrinks and shrivels up. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but amazing. you have this system already innate in you because God created you with that. Praise God. And so if you obey what he tells you to do, you will have none of these diseases. Amen. But more important than your uh, health and life here on this planet, 
God is offering to you eternal life. And no matter how much health or non-health you have on this planet, if you don't have that eternal life, you could live to 100 years on this planet healthfully, but if you don't have that eternal life, it's not going to matter. Right. So you need to get to know Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, thank you, Jed. Can so I just, add one more thing, Steph? Yeah. I think uh, uh, most of you are coming to Edmonds Church, and we have Sabbath school lesson. Last, last Sabbath school uh, lesson, the first one is uh, it's better to to have one day in the in God's court than ten thousand one thousand years, right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I think uh, Elder Lee is talking about. That we can live in this life even only one day, but knows. Jesus Christ and have assurance of salvation is a lot better than 1,000 years living here miserably without any future hope. Right. You know, uh, I just, uh, for my curiosity, I just Googled uh, the other day, uh, 10 most expensive drugs in the United States. And uh, you know, the, the most important, the, the first one it shows is uh, hemgenics. Uh, you know, this medicine is uh, uh, given for hemophilia patients mm. and it's a gene therapy and it's not 100% guarantee and how much it cost 3.5 million dollars only for one dose oh. 3.5 million dollars i have here wow. all 10 different yeah. drugs they're all <laughs> above million dollars and so uh if so we really have to to really, as, a, uh, as we Adventist, uh, when we truly believe that God actually gave us experience of coming out of Egypt, yes. you know, not the uh, literal Israel people, we all are. We all came out of Babylon. Mm -hmm. And we are calling those in Babylon, come out, join with us. Mm -hmm. We have to show some kinds of example, even in this life. Mm -hmm. and that's why. Uh, you know, elderly said, uh, you know, new start. And, and this is what I brought here, new start. It's my, my clinic's uh, name, actually, new start uh, PML clinic. Mm -hmm. And my, I carried this uh, last time, some treat, and, uh, and I just share, you know, look at what are these new start. And I share, you know, and especially the, the trust in God, and it's opened up the, you know, good opportunity to witnessing. But as you know, uh, I think uh, some of you know that already uh, this magazine here. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody saw this magazine, raise your hand. Not, Not everybody. Oh yeah. Uh, this is the National Geography, you know, yeah. very uh, credible, credible magazines. And it, this old one, 1905. Mm. And they checked uh, what community have a longevity uh, uh, the people are living long, not just long, but healthy, long life. And they found the three different area in the whole continent of the planet Earth. And the, the first one was uh, Okinawa in Japan. And the second one is uh, Sardinia in Italy. And the third one is uh, where? It's in America. Yeah, where? In Loma Linda area. Why Loma Linda? Have you, you, you trouble Loma Linda? There, you know, the smoke is coming from the LA through that area. So even though they don't have any good air, but still that's where the Adventists are living, and they are superb compared with all the not only all the neighbor, not only whole United States, is globally. They have proven that there are a community where they love Jesus Christ Amen. and they love God's commandment. And there's a blessing. And then if you, if they, they have a, you know, like a, one doctor who is a, here, he is 91 still doing the cardiovascular surgery. And, uh, wow. and uh, uh, there are some, there's all, it, 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 this kind of article, you cannot just uh, give money to somebody to, to do it. It's such a, a witness how the God's people are when they follow health principle, there is a blessing on this life too. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't really known much about health messages of Seventh-day Adventists, this is time for you to get into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just uh, leave it here, you can come and watch it. And because of that, there is now, they call blue zone, mm -hmm. blue zone. 
And so I want all of us to be a member of Blue Zone. You know, that this is our witness. We have to carry this church to the world. Yes. You know, we cannot ask them to come here. Nobody's coming here much. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So we have to go out there. So that's, uh, I think, a very important message we have. So relieving pain heaven's way. Just have a few more um, slides <laughs> to go through here. So and pain, of course, hydrotherapy is one of the best things. You pray, but hydrotherapy is one of the best things to use on pain. Um, you have a question here? On hydrotherapy, uh, this is something that me and Sharon have, have used many times. I don't really remember where we first heard this. It may have been from one of the lifestyle centers. I don't remember. But it's if you are cooking in your kitchen and maybe you're using oil, I'm not arguing whether you should be frying or not. That's another discussion. But if you get some hot oil burns or anything on your hand, sometimes you'll be cooking on an electric stove and maybe you put your hand too close to the burner. So when you first get burned, <laughs> that burn actually continues as long as you feel heat on your hand. So even when you draw your hand back, if you don't do something to cool the flesh down, the burn is going to turn into an ugly scar. But you can generally stop that. And so what we've learned to do, the second you get some hot water or something scalding you, you drop what you're doing and you just go to the faucet, your tap, turn it on all cold, and put your hand under the cold water in the tap for, say, two minutes. The trick is to hold it under there until you don't feel a sting anymore. And if you do that, so this is a simple example of hydrotherapy. It's very practical and easy, but it's very powerful. You can generally even prevent developing a scar. But the trick is to keep it under the running cold water until you don't feel any sting and any pain anymore. And then after that, you can just uh, slap some aloe vera plant on the, on the hand. And it will. this is absolutely keeps you from coming out of the kitchen looking like a scarred up third degree burn monster. It's very effective and it's very practical. So that's something that we found very effective in hydrotherapy. So I'm presenting that idea because usually someone talks about the sheets and the poultices and they use these fancy words, but a simple, easy thing to convince yourself is the next time you get a burn, immediately run and put your hand or whatever the skin was burned under cold water until it stops hurting and see the difference that it makes. And some other, some pain herbs and supplements. So bromelain is um, one of the best um, supplements for um, inflammatory, inflammation. That comes from the pineapple. Uh, and for this one to work, for this supplement to work, you need to take it on an empty stomach. If you take it with your food, then it's just going to act as a digestive, and it's just going to help you digest your food. So if you're taking it for pain, then you need to take it on an empty stomach. And there's other things like witch hazel, arnica, um, which is an external one, really good for like sp- uh, sprains and strains. Uh, and this is one that I learned, um, which is food combining uh, for, for pain. And I learned this because I have, um, I had some, uh, some joint pain uh, some years ago, and it was really, really bad. I mean, I literally could not even tie my shoes. It was that bad. And I ended up getting the flu sometime in between when I had this pain. And at that time, I, I used to, I like scrambled eggs. So I stopped eating eggs because it just kind of, you know when you have the flu, you just can't eat. You just don't want to Ugh, eat. Yeah, it was just gross. So I stopped eating and I ended up inadvertently food combining. So if you don't know what food combining is, it means that you don't eat um, uh, very um, dense protein with carb foods. Like you wouldn't eat um, like the eggs with like bread or something like that, or you know, like steak and potatoes or something like that. Yeah. Like a burger, sandwiches and stuff like that. And during that time, my pain went away. Oh, man. Wow. And then I remember thinking, I was like, well, this is strange because I have the flu, but now I have no, no hip pain. What's going on? And so it turns out that the, when you eat those things uh, together, and on a normal basis, I'm not saying that you can't do it, but if you're in, in pain, then you might want to consider doing that because it reduces the toxin levels, levels in your body. And a lot of time, that's where pain is coming from. It's coming from the toxins in your body. So that's just another way to reduce um, the toxins in your body is food combining and to reduce that pain. Um, and now, Curing coughs, colds, and allergies. We already have the onion, the sliced onion um, in your sock one. And I actually put that on there 
because I knew about <laughs> Elder Brad's um, uh, testimony on that one. Um, Mullen is a, is a good herb for allergies, and that's considered a, a noxious weed, and it grows everywhere. And that is, this is one of the main herbs that I use for allergies, because I have allergies every summer. I make a tea with that, and I actually have to drink it maybe twice, and then that's it. I never get allergies for the rest of the summer. And so it's not even something that you have to take all the time. And so it's, it's getting harder to find. Um, I usually gather it you know, somewhere close to my job, but you can actually order it as well. Um, and there's also echinacea, um, elderberries, zinc is also good for um, keeping that immune system up. Um, and then I have Frank's toddy on there, and that's uh, something that we use. Like as soon as we feel anything coming on, you basically chop uh, raw garlic, raw onions, and then you pour hot water on it, is what we do, and then you mix a little bit of lemon and a little bit of honey in there, and you just drink that. And that's, that works uh, remarkably well as, as well. Um, lifestyle changes. Um, one of the things is to stop eating immune system depressing foods. What's the number one immune system depressing food? Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> But, and that's why everybody gets sick right around <laughs> Thanksgiving, December, the New Year, is because as soon as it comes Thanksgiving time, everybody's making cakes, pies, cookies. Um, everybody's giving everyone cakes, pies, cookies. And it's hard to say no, and so we're all gobbling it up and eating it, and then we're shocked that we have a cold or a flu in a few weeks. And so that's something that we want to um, look at as well. And so in closing here, um, Jesus says that I am the light of the world, and he that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. <coughs> and so just as God's truth and his church is not a mixture of truth and error, God's healing system is also not a mixture of truth and error. And it says there's no darkness in it. And so he wants us to heal. God wants us to heal, but he wants us to heal thoroughly and wholly. So the... the um, the definition for the word in the Greek, when Jesus healed people, it meant to heal thoroughly. So he didn't, you know, he didn't keep you like what um, Dr. Lee said, um, how they have people on this chronic, um, these chronic medications where you have to take like the drug for the rest of your life. Jesus healed people completely, and that's what we want. Um, so there's a last question for our panel. What encouragement do you have uh, for those here today who have decided to follow God's way of health and healing, how can you encourage them to do it safely and naturally? Um, I think how I would encourage it is just stay the course. Um, don't give up on God because he is not going to give up on you. Amen. Trust his word because it is with power. Amen. We have the sun rising and setting for the last near 6,000 years as proof of that. And if he says that if you are obedient, I will bring none of these diseases upon you. He means it. And he will, he will not allow the devil to come in and introduce sickness. So stay the course. We live in a very instant gratification-oriented society. So if you, for example, make this decision to heal God's way, and in a week you're like, nothing's happening, please stay the course because something is happening the minute you change what you've been doing for what God would have you to do with your body. Something's happening instantly. But just like you put that seed in the ground and you don't see anything happening above the ground for like two weeks or so, but then all of a sudden you see these little seedlings, that seedling didn't just appear. It was happening under the ground. That seed was sprouting, and then it starts to come to shoot up. So trust God, stay the course, keep at it, and keep praying and, and just doing what he asks you to do. Dr. Lee? Yeah, uh, God doesn't ask our past what have happened because he said, in Christ, there is a new creation. And that happened today, this moment, and continue. So I think uh, 
God not only will give us a new body, new heaven, I mean, when he comes, but I think we can enjoy our health uh, even today and on as long as we're in Christ. Right. So we can take some questions now. Let's just say questions. I have a question. <laughs> Judy. White mic, um, please. White mic. I don't think so. There okay. <laughs> okay, this is on the topic of sugar, because I was sitting here thinking, um, sugar has been a drug for me over the years, and it's really a drug. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that's been affected by it and addicted to it. So the Lord has really helped me. I remember making a whole sheet of cookies and eating it myself and having to skip work the next day because I was mm. so sick. Mm. Anyway, because I was trying to replace the oils, and so I used corn syrup mm. instead of the oil. Anyway, which is worse for you than oil. So anyway, so I've had a struggle over the years, and, um, but the Lord's really helped me I've used, you know, the book Councils on Diets and Foods a lot for my go-to and tried to go whole foods instead of anything processed like oil. I use nuts and seeds now and in my cooking. I used to be afraid of nuts, that they were going to make me fat, but they don't. They ha are so full of fiber that they they do not make you fat. And so I use a ton of seeds and um, replace all the sugar, processed sugar, with using bananas and dates. Mm -hmm. And it works really well. So I just want to encourage you. The Lord's reasonable. He, the other day, <coughs> okay, real quick, my granddaughter probably takes after me and her parents got after her for hiding, you know, candy under her bed or whatever. And so they're like, no more sugar for you. So, of course, my heart went out to her. And so I brought my champion juicer to their house and said, don't worry. You know, I'm going to make you some good ice cream that has no sugar in it. And so I brought, you know, frozen bananas, frozen mangoes, frozen cherries, and... And she's like, do you think this is, has this been the best ice cream you've ever eaten? She asked me. So anyway, I just want to say you can make really great things with the whole foods that the Lord has created. And we don't have to be discouraged, you know, so we can still have our health and have our cake too. So praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Do we have any other comments or questions? We have one over here. I, I was just going to share that uh, somebody was, uh, uh, something I learned here about uh, hydrotherapy. And I've had uh, pain, uh, cramps in my legs and pain in my knees. And uh, I take <clears throat> a hot salt water bath and I get, get it just as hot as I can get it. And uh, it takes so well, it takes a minute for me to get into it, <laughs> but then I do a cold shower and <clears throat> always take out my false teeth before the cold shower because they're coming out anyway. <laughs> and uh, anyway, and I've been doing doing this three times a week: the hot salt water bath, cold shower, and it helps. That was it. We have. Can you put your hand up, Samantha? You can. Is the bromelain from the pineapple from fresh or canned? Um, so uh, when I talk about bromelain, I'm talking about an actual supplement that you have to purchase. Now, you can, you can eat the pineapple. It'll give you bromelain. But if you're taking it for pain and you're using it for pain management, you probably want to get an actual supplement because it's going to have a much higher concentration. Carlene? I would like to tell you a, a quick unusual miracle. I don't know how many of you have heard of DSMO. Yeah. Um, it's a supplement that comes from, um, 
is it, oh, I'm trying to think, some kind of fruit, I think, or some kind of tree, anyway. And along with MSM, another derivative from the same thing, you know, very similar. But I was t taking them internally. You could take it internally. People say that you can't, but you can actually ingest it internally as well as externally. A doctor in OSHU actually used it on a paraplegic patient, and, and she started being able to move her body. And so anyway, I'm just saying that I started using it one day internally, and actually, one of my teeth, my wisdom teeth, start to grow back. I get you not. Wow. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, testifying about this on Met, Met Missionary, you know, and uh, one of the guys says, there's no way you could get teeth back until Jesus come. I said, are you sure about that? And so anyway, he didn't believe my testimony. Then another lady came in and piped up. The same thing happened with her uncle. Mm. His teeth start to grow back. So you can, by God's grace, re as well as regrow. I mean, some of your body parts can regrow. Well, you know, not your arm or whatever like that. You never know. But I'm just saying to you, a miracle actually happened. My, and I stopped taking it because I didn't want to look like a shark. I didn't know where the tooth was going. And so, but anyway, I'm just saying that you, you can actually regrow your teeth. Yeah. So that's a miracle I just yeah. wanted to tell yeah. you about. Thank you for sharing Absolutely. that. <laughs> oh, she said D S O M. No, D S M O. Oh, thank you. D M S M O. D D M S M O. And S M S M M S M. Let me just not talk, okay? And M S M. How about that? Is there any more questions or comments on anything? Um, my mom was asking if your tooth comes out the third time, can it regrow back? If it comes out the third time. The third time? Yeah. I, I mean, I really don't know because, I mean, this, I only had the, the tooth the, the second time to go back, so I don't know about the third. Okay. Yeah. And I wouldn't know the answer to that either. <laughs> but I would say do your research because, you know, God can work miracles through, through things that we don't even know about that are actually uh, beneficial to the body. Okay, so I think that um, I put up a quick schedule here of the rest of the series that we have coming up for the year. Um, May 25th, we'll, we're going to do um, uh, simple remedies and herbs for serious ailments. Um, and so that one should be, it'll be a lot more hands on. We'll have like, you know, actual herbs to show you the different um, things that you can use. And I, I, use, I make this one for serious ailments because a lot of times we think that we can, the herbs you just use for simple, you know, like the cough and cold. But we're talking about very serious stuff. And the herbs work just as well, if not better for those. And so we'll talk about that one. Um, in July, we're gonna have one on how to eat and nourish the body. Um, there's a lot of times we eat. So basically when you eat and you feel hungry in a couple of hours, that means that that meal didn't quite work. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to eat and not feel hungry for the next five hours. Amen. And so if you're eating and you're hungry after an hour or two and you're like, okay, I gotta have some food and you start getting jittery, that means that you are, your body's not being nourished. Your meal is missing something. And that's what we're gonna talk about with that July one. Um, and the use of the voice, which I hope Janine will help me with this one. <laughs> um, this one is very important because the spirit of prophecy has a lot to say of how we use our voice. Um, and you know, this is stuff that affects our health. Um, and so this is gonna be a really interesting one. And then the final one we're gonna do is um, home and health care in the Bible and spirit of prophecy. And all this kind of little more obscure doctrines that we tend to look over. Um, uh, and now we're gonna talk about those. So um, April, 
I thought I saw your hand up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the mic is white. Mic. White mic. I. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to say when you were saying something about being hungry after a meal, mm -hmm. there's more than one reason. Sometimes it's just that you're thirsty. It has nothing to do with that you're hungry. And that's one thing I've learned in my life. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I thought I was hungry, nothing to do with it. I was actually hungry. dehydrated. Mm -hmm. I had not drank enough water that day. I hadn't drink, you know, I drank maybe two cups of water that day or something. And so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, you're uh, a couple of weeks, a couple, some months early, but we are, we're, what are we going to do with that? It's going to be a very interesting one. So um, I'd like to thank our panel. Um, it was kind of a last minute put together for some of it, and I really appreciate um, the input yeah, thank um, you. for Janine and Dr. Lee. Um, and I really appreciate everyone coming. Um, Dr. Lee, can you close us out with prayer? Okay. Our Father in heaven, uh, we thank you for this session this afternoon to share together what we know each other about uh, your way of health for us. We are so grateful that you have given us the life, even though this life is not the life you intended for us initially, but at least through this life only, we can understand and learn and uh, uh, have faith in the true life that will come, the eternal life, which we can enjoy even when we accept Jesus Christ on this earth. Please remember, make us remember that, uh, that our body is your temple, mm -hmm. the, your glory will dwell, so that through this temple, whatever we do, do it for your glory and honor, and help us to uh, follow your conviction so that uh, you will direct us to meet some people this coming week that you uh, providentially arrange so that uh, through us you can uh, give a message to that person, the one that he needs to hear the love of Jesus Christ. So bless each and every one of us to learn more about uh, the wonderfully and fearfully made uh, this body and we can use it and honor it for you and also enjoy this this body of health and please save us uh, keep us safe until we come back again on the next Sabbath. we ask all these things in the name of our lord jesus christ amen, amen. amen.